this is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee with the fucking circle jerks today. This is awesome. You guys, you know. Playing some Tower of Power. What is hip? What is hip, dude? You're hip. Oh, well, thank you very much. This is hip. This is very hip. Thanks, um, man. Man, what an honor it is to be here. Uh, you know, if it weren't for you guys doing this shit in the 70s and 80s, yeah. I would have never found hardcore and punk rock in the 90s. Late 70s. Late 70s. Early 80s. But still, all right, so right out of the gate. What you're the making me feel old, Hey, man. man I'm, I'm, <laughs> you're not old. You're still here doing it. I'm dude, 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 if you're you would have told me, tour. If you'd have told me when I was in my 20s that I'd be playing in a punk rock band, a seminal fucking hardcore band. <laughs> right? In my 60s, I would have said, you're fucking crazy, dude. I'm going to be dead by that time. And punk rock ain't never going to go nowhere, hey. man. We were all just a bunch of misfits and ne'er-do-wells, you know? You didn't want to live to be 34. We're seeing nuclear exactly. war. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> seeing nuclear war, right. So, like, dude. Now I say live slow, die old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like more that. into self-preservation yeah. than I was before. Well, and then, obviously, beyond, you know, fucking helping create a genre of music, you also do... Um, you know, a solo act, you play with fucking Joe Strummer. Yeah, uh, guitar. Yeah, totally different. Well, you were yeah, a guitar yeah. player first, right? I've only played bass in, in two bands. I played bass in the Circle Jerks and the Weirdos, two seminal, you know, yeah. punk rock bands. But a lot of people uh, mainly know me for um, being a bass player because those are such high profile right, names. Pretty big deals. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I played guitar in several bands and stuff. Man, I mean, would you say that guitar is your proficiency or are you 50 50? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I started out as a guitar player and, uh, you know, I needed a gig, so. Yeah. <laughs> Shit what happens. can I say? That's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. You know what I mean? Well, fuck. All right, man. Well, this Joe is. Joe Strummer snatched me up. He said, hey, man, you know, why are you, why are you playing bass in a hardcore band? You're such a great guitar player. And so, you know, speaking of gear, uh, Joe, um, I have a 64 uh, Fender Stratocaster, custom black, one of 100 made that year. And uh, Joe bought me the guitar. Joe Strummer bought me the guitar. And it was previously owned by, by Sid Vicious. Jesus. Um, and uh, given to Steve, when, Steve Jones when, when Sid died. And currently, a guy who produces my solo albums, Gus Seifert, is bass player for Roger Waters. And he's, he's letting Roger play my black Strat, you know, because I keep it at Gus's studio sure. and he, he ensures it. So Roger, if you see Roger Waters playing a um, you know, pre CBS black strat, that's my strat. That's fucking gnarly, dude. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow, and that's a, that's a that's a substantial guitar to loan. Yeah. To anybody. <laughs> and now this this bass here, uh, you know, this is one of two basses that, that Mike Schultz at Fender sent me. It's an American made P bass. I actually this is a little bit of a sad story, but uh, during our ten year hiatus I, I thought circle jerks are never gonna get back together again. So I had a, a, a 64 cream colored uh. P bass um, that I was my workhorse bass. I sold it to the Hard Rock for like 1,500 bucks <laughs> and got rid of my my rig as well, my Ampeg head, my you know uh, my vintage Ampeg head and my 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 cabinet. Fucking <laughs> oh, that hurts my because heart. Because I yeah, because I never thought the Circle Jerks would be doing this, but you know what? Dreams do come yeah. true. Dude, fucking world tour. Sick. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, we're, we're kind of doing better than, than we ever have. And, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, if you would have said that, you know, we'd be as, as more successful than ever and punk rock would be pervasive across all culture. Totally. I would have said, you're nuts, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, fuck. I mean, especially back then when you guys started late 70s and doing this in the 80s, it was such a finite thing you know there wasn't maybe LA and New York maybe my Miami had a hardcore scene going on but like today it's a worldwide yeah. phenomenon you know and, and, and especially with like a lot of you know the guys that started doing it you see across the board now there's this huge um, nostalgia happening mm -hmm. for you know Black Flag, Flag, The Misfits, fucking Circle Oh Jerks, yeah artists. we're gonna be playing with the Descendants, right. we're gonna be playing with the Misfits and it's like Punk rock is, is bigger than ever, and uh, you know we're doing sold out shows all over the place, and uh, business is great. And uh, you know, honestly, it's like I kind of used to resent breaking my arm off as a younger man, like playing this music that is so fast, so hard and intense. 
But as a 60-year-old man, I'm finding it really exhilarating. <laughs> it's it's fun, like, yeah. a, <laughs> like a like a midlife crisis guy, like, you know, Buying driving a, and a shit. Porsche, <laughs> yeah, you know, totally. and going real fast. It's like sweating it out and like, you know, breaking my arm off playing this stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of hey, exhilarating. Man, you rust, you rust. You got to stay on it, dude. That's right. Yeah, dude. All right, so pretty Spartan rig. Now, would this be like an approximation of what you were playing back before you sold all your shit or? Well, yeah, you know, I've always thought that, that uh, a Fender P, P bass is the workhorse bass of, of the industry. And with this, it's like, um, with this kind of music, there's lots of downstrokes, you know. Um, so I have my action raised and, um, you know, uh, literally it's like for years I played uh, round wound strings and they tore up my fingers and I'd have to change my strings every night, a lot of breakage. I, uh, I started playing flat wound strings probably in the, in the 90s. And these don't break as much and it delineates the sound away from, from the, the you know, low string of the guitar a lot more. Right. Because, you know, I was like, well, it just sounds like, you know, like a, like a deep guitar on stage. Um, so yeah, flat wounds are a big secret of mine. Because not many dudes are doing that, especially in punk rock, right? And also this, you know, it's like punk, punk rock is you, you, you pretty much have to play with a pick to get that aggressive right. uh, downstroke attack. These picks I get from Fender and uh, it's a fen heavy Fender triangle pick. These were originally designed for Elvis Presley. And if you go down to, no shit. If you go down to the Graceland Museum, you'll see a pick just like this with the initials EP on it. And I thought to myself, well, for one thing, if it's good enough for Elvis Presley, it's good enough it's for me. King of rock and roll, man. For another thing, if you're playing downstrokes at 200 BPM um, and you break a tip, you can turn it. Turn it. And Brilliant. you have two more tips until you have to change, you know, so you can right. get through a block of songs um, easily. More surface to string, a lot more click for the buck, <laughs> and uh, also a lot more surface to thumb and four, uh, index finger because there's a lot of sweat going uh, on. Good call. A yeah. lot of slippage. Huh. So this is like really crucial to, to, to what I do, you know, with the circle jerk. I think it's an absolute fucking UFO of a pig though. It's huge. <laughs> like, well, yeah, and I've actually found that I can use these on all, all these different instruments. I started uh, playing bazooki about like cool. uh, 20 years ago, the Greek bazooki. And this is perfect for the bazooki. Interesting. Um, now I, I, you know, I, I do a lot of finger picking and stuff like sure. that, so I don't even use a pick on the guitar. But um, at any rate, yeah, standard of the industry. You know, when you're when you're playing a, a like a like a work intensive kind of group like this, uh, you want to have I, I want to have an A10 speaker cabinet um, and a, a, a tube head, you know, Ampeg Classic. Um, and a P bass. It's kind of the sound. It's it kind the of thing. the sound. And, uh, you know, fortunately, my buddy Gus that I told you is playing with Roger. So he's, you know, using, I've lent him my Strat. He's lent me his 19, I think it's early 70s, Blue Line Ampeg head um, with a flight case and a straight back cab from 1968 with 1968 uh i think i, I don't know if celestian is the speaker i'm what not a gearhead yeah. dude but at any rate um it sounds a lot different than the slant back cab it's a it's a <laughs> lot more powerful a lot more growly um unfortunately we had uh probably due to the the, the volume and everything and maybe just road wear we lifted up the, the grill the other day and, and found three broken speakers. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm gonna send it back to LA when we go to Europe and get it, uh, the speakers reconed, you know, yeah. the 68 speakers. Um, sure. And I'm, I'm just using uh, the opening band slant back cab. It sounds, it sounds fine. Sounds It'll get me great. through till yeah. we go to Europe. By the time it goes to the PA and everything anyway, it's gonna, yeah. it sounded amazing in the house, which is, it was such a treat for us that we just actually watched the sound check, oh, cool. which was awesome for me because like, you know, I've seen videos of you guys from yeah. the 80s and 90s and you know, cameras kind of suck shit back then. Yeah. So like actually hearing you guys live in a venue that sounds awesome was Could you hear the bass clearly? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to, if I'm breaking my arm up here, I want, I want yeah. to be here. I want to be heard, man. I got to stretch like an hour before the show. Dude, yeah, I did not see uh, the flat wounds coming. Also, I read somewhere one time that you, um, 
I think the first practice you had with the circle jerks, you brought like a fucking fretless bass. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did for my for my jazz days. I lived with uh, my jazz teacher for a year, and uh, I, I, you know, studied jazz guitar with him. And um, at that time, I his bass player um, also was playing a fretless, and so I got a fretless jazz bass. And uh, you know, that was the bass that I came in and auditioned with, with the circle jerks on. They didn't know whether well, I yeah, sounds great. Or not. <laughs> You know, um, but at any rate, yeah, I, I did yeah. audition on a fretless jazz bass. That's fucking funny, man. <laughs> right. I know. Speaking of jazz basses, you have a J and a P. So let's talk about that, because I'm sure this is okay. like kind of a stock bass, right? Both yeah. Okay. Uh, if I could be very honest, yeah. I, I probably made a mistake by getting the <laughs> jazz bass. Um, just because uh, when, I, when I pick it up, if I, if I get a string break or something like that, or something goes wrong, I got to use a second bass. The, uh, the neck is a lot thinner. Totally. It's a lot faster. And uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, surface, you know, the, the strings are a lot lower. So I had the um, uh, action adjusted and put some flat wounds on it and trying to adjust for it. But I should have gotten two P bases. Right, I was right. just I was just feeling frisky and I thought, yeah, ah, you know. Best of both worlds. Yeah, best totally. of both worlds. I'd never, you know, I hadn't played a jazz bass since I auditioned with the Circle Jerks. But, uh. <laughs> Bloody, 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 blah. Yeah. Well, you got one now. I mean, have you had to use it at all on this run? Yes, yeah. I have. I've had three string breakages uh, with the A string, but we filed down the bridge piece, and it, it, everything is looking Dude, you good never now. hear of bass players fucking breaking strings like you do. You must be beating the shit out of I'm it. I'm beating the shit out of it, you know. I mean, and it's fast and furious, and you'll, yeah. you'll see tonight. The circle jerks are on point. We're sharper than we've ever been. The band sounds better than it's ever sounded since I've been in the band, and that's... 38 plus years. Long fucking time, dude. So, uh, you, you guys are in for a treat. Well, Xander, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to of us. Of course, man. Man, this has been an absolute treat. Yeah, And uh, we'll catch you tonight. All right, yeah. All thank right. you so much. Bye, everybody. Cool. Hey, guys, now we're on the other side of the stage with Greg Hudson. You know this guy. Come on, Circle Jerks, Bad Religion, fucking Punk Rock Karaoke. Uh, all lies. All lies, no, and he's got the coolest blue suede shoes fucking ever, blue suede oh, vans. Thank you, my blue suede vans. <laughs> Those are so cool, dude. <laughs> thank you. So, man, I have seen you play all manner of fucking sweet guitars. Um, this, to me, looks like one of those 62 reissues, I'm guessing? 61. 61 reissue? 61. Are yeah, you? I got it last year. I, I, I couldn't bring my, uh, yeah. my 62. I have a 62. And I have a 71. I just didn't want to ring on the road anymore. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> I mean, and plus, these things sound really, really good. They look anyway. cool. So yeah. got the, you know, the, yeah. the Vibrola, Maestro Vibrola thingy here. I love that you took it off. The tailpiece. Yeah, I don't well, ever. Save you some trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. And yeah. then, um, have you modded that pickup? That looks like something different. Yeah, it's a Seymour Duncan. It is a Seymour Duncan uh, Alnico 2. Ah. Uh -huh. Right on, yeah, that thing sounds killer. And then for, you got a, you guys have a pretty Spartan rig. Yeah. However, the 800 I totally expected. Sounds fucking killer, I love that amp. That I've always been- That been modified. Oh, really? Yeah. What, did you have the um, Presence mod or? It, it's called the the Crunch mod. It's, Ooh. what's the guy's name? I, I had to look, I forgot his name. Let me look, yeah. let me go to my, my, my notes here. Clear. Oh, the Crunch mod from Martin, Martin Gula, but LA Sound Design. Right on, Martin. <laughs> the guy, he does uh, Billy Joe Armstrong stuff. And, oh, right on. Yeah, so he modded that. That's a newer one, that's the early 2000s. And this is the uh, 2555 Marshall, just straight. And so are no you running mods. these both at, like always on? Yeah, always okay, on, Okay, cool. Yeah. And then no pedals. No pedals. No effects. Are you no. ever fucking with your volume or your tone or anything like that? Or no, not really? No. Just kind of balls to the walls, huh? Yeah, balls to the walls. <laughs> I yeah. Love it, man. Easy volume up, tone up. Can't get much easier than that. What about yeah. strings and picks? What are you running? Like as far strings, as gauges? Uh, these are regular tens, the uh, Dunlop. Yeah. Dunlop picks. My signature pick. Nice. Get close up on that. I don't know. Anyway. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. this is, I mean, I know it's not a ton of gear, but mm -hmm. I mean, if it's good enough for Angus, it's fucking good enough yeah, for anybody the, to the rock Mesa and roll. Mesa cabinets here. Love the Mesa cabs. Do you know what speakers are in those? No, I've had them for so long, I don't even remember. <laughs> purple, too. Those are super cool, man. Yeah, my daughter's name is Violet, so I got oh, the purple. Oh, that's yeah. such a cool little... Yeah, why that's not? Fun. Homage to my daughter. Yeah. And w speaking of, your daughter's a musician, right? Yeah, yeah. she is. We should give her a little plug. I what? will. Yeah. Her band is called Power Violets. <laughs> and, Very cool, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. She got to open up for us a few weeks ago in, in New York. How cool is, is that? Cool. Yeah. I'm a proud daddy. Yeah, that rules, man. Mm -hmm. That rules. I just became a father myself. Well, congratulations. It's a very fun thing. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, we, I, I know you got a sound check and we got to get out of here and you got a bunch of other bands on the bill. I but know, and then my AB, and then your AB, AB pedal went out. Switched, yeah, that sucks. I was like, oh my God, yeah. Were you using that just to silence yourself on stage or were you... No, just to, 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 just to, to run the two together. Oh, okay. So yeah. now you're going to have to get a new one of those before you start rocking tonight, huh? Yeah. But, you know, you adapt, you improvise. If you got to go with one head, two cabinets, you got to do that sometimes. Yeah. Show must go on. Show must go on. Man, uh, I, I know... I'm probably speaking for a lot of people that are watching this particular rig rundown that uh, I owe you a debt of gratitude. If you guys hadn't done what you did in the late 70s and the 80s, I would have never found hardcore in the 90s. And oh, cool. it fucking changed my life. So I really, for really appreciate it. For the better, I it. hope. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. For excellent. the better. Absolutely. Excellent, excellent. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And, uh, Come check these guys out on a tour, man. It's been a long time. 15 years, right? 15 tours from since our last proper tour. Yeah, so come on out. Yeah, come see them. I don't em. think you'll be disappointed, but you might. <laughs> Later, guys.